Just over the course of the, the tea and coffee this morning, that I thought I was going to have to kind of go around, make a small talk, I hate making a small talk, but you are all brilliant at making a small talk. Um, I went into the room to, to usher you all up and I could not hear myself. So, if we can keep up this level for the entire three days, I think your voices will all be completely gone by it. So, um, that's partly why this year we have a Slack channel, so that you have ways of talking to each other once your voices all completely go. So, um, this is also really great for me. Um, I'm an Edinburgh native, I was born in Edinburgh, um, I grew up in Edinburgh, I came to university in Edinburgh, I work in a university in Edinburgh. So, it is absolutely amazing to welcome you all to Edinburgh for the collaboration workshop. Um, which I consider to be the sort of spiritual home, despite the fact we've been in Oxford for the last few years. Um, and I'm especially delighted that uh, you know you all decided to come, even though you may be in England. And, you know, <laughs> I know it's difficult getting across. But anyway, um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Neil Chubong. Um, I'm the director of the Software Sustainability Institute, and I'm not going to say very much about the Software Sustainability Institute. Um, we are a UK-based organisation that helps uh, researchers, developers, policymakers, um, anyone who is involved in research software. Um, and by research software, this is all of the stuff that makes research happen. So the code, the scripts, the software, the platforms, and so on. Um, so that's what we are. What we do is focused around a number of different aspects. Uh, the software itself, um, and understanding how to make it better, uh, training to understand how we can create uh, skills and knowledge amongst all of these different uh, people who are using research software, the community, this is the community, so running events like this, um, a number of the people you, you see here will talk about this thing called the fellowship, it is not something to do with uh, the Lord of the Rings, although a lot of them wish it was, uh, but uh, ask them about it. It's, uh, it's one of our uh, community initiatives to try and get people exchanging knowledge and driving forward change. And a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is really about driving forward change. Um, the same goes with the policy work we do. The policy work we do is all around trying to understand what evidence we can provide to policymakers to drive change. Um, and finally, the outreach work we do. So hopefully you have seen things like the, uh, the tweets we put out, the blog posts that other people have written and so on. Um, and one of the great things I think about this year's workshop is we always like shaking things up a little bit for the workshop. So if you've been to this workshop before, the thing you will see that is different this year is this idea about communicating what you've been doing. So last few years, we've been doing great at having discussions. Um, three years ago, we started adding in the um, hack day on Thursday to try and get a little bit further into doing things. Um, this year, we're also asking you to communicate things. So get your thinking on thinking hats on to understand how it is you can communicate to the outside world what's happening in this room so they feel like they wanted to be a part of it. So that's the Software Sustainability Institute. What is the collaborations workshop? So, the question I have is really going to why you collaborate. And there are lots of different answers around this. Um, some people say that collaboration is this process where you get all of these people working together, all of you, and you talk and you find out your mutual interests, you look at your badges, you go, why have I got a red pound sign, whereas he's got a green pound sign, and she's got a grey pound sign, and you start thinking, oh god, is this because people think that I'm skint and <laughs> they have money, should I talk to them? Um, so, so, some people say collaboration is about finding these mutual intersections to understand where you can bend. Um, other people say that uh, it's basically suspending your mutual <laughs> hatred for everyone else in the room so that you can get something out. I don't really care which one it is. As long as, as long as you kind of go forward and understand how you can work with other people to get something out of it. You might hate them all, but it doesn't matter because for two days, three days, what you're in is an environment where what we would like you to do is understand how you can get to that mutual day. Um, and uh, this is a great quote from someone who is not coming from the research space, but is an artist. 
So when we talk about the great collaborations, we often think about ourselves and researchers and software developers and so on. But the really great collaborations have come from all sorts of domains. When you talk about art, the, the idea of collaborating between the person who's the concept, the people who prepare the materials, sometimes the people who bring everything together with their particular skills, that is collaboration. And I think one of the things that you understand from the art world is actually the best collaborations come about when there is a loosening of the structure, where you don't quite understand how things are going to go, but you take it that way anyway. So, I think that's a good, good kind of way of segueing into the idea of what an unconference is. So, who's been to an unconference before? Okay, it's about half of you. Um, what, one of the things about the unconference is that it is a little bit different from a regular academic or even industry conference. Um, and there's three things I would like to get across to you. Um, one is that you're not you're not uh, an audience. So the idea here is not just to kind of uh, listen to the presentations, um, take notes, go back to your desk uh, on, on Wednesday or Thursday, and then say, oh, you know, um, by the way, I listened to this great talk. Um, maybe you should email this person. The idea here is we do the lightning talks, and we do all of the other talks, so that you understand who you might want to talk to in the coffee break that happens immediately after. We also do lightning talks because it lets you hear from as large a, a proportion of the room as possible. And even if you're not doing a lightning talk, talk about what you do. Um, get people to understand what you care about and what you would like to learn. So be a participant. Um, the other thing about unconferences is it, they encourage you to get a little bit off the beaten track. And what do I mean by this? Um, what I do not want to see at this collaborations workshop is a retread of the same discussions, the same debates, uh, essentially the same kind of talking shop where we all bemoan the fact that there isn't enough money, that uh, we can't understand how to change people's minds, that we basically don't think things can go any further, so why don't we moan about it? Collaborations Workshop is not about moaning. Collaborations Workshop is about understanding how to get beyond what we've already talked about to where we would like to go. And sometimes the best way of doing that is simply by trying a different perspective or getting a different person in the conversation. So seek out those different people, bring them into the conversation, and work out how you can move that conversation on. Because the main thing about an unconference is that it is about changing culture. Um, the whole point of doing it in this way is that you, as the participants, can lead the way we're going. So we would like you to change the world, literally. Um, we would like you to suggest things and work together on things that in a very small way will change what is going to um, happen to those that follow you. So think about that. You know, What would you like to see different? A lot of the collaborations workshop is structured around this, idea, this workflow of presenting what you do, coming together to discuss what you feel passionately about, understanding how you might change that, remove the barriers, and then in the hack day, start the process of removing those barriers. Um, and if you think you can't change the world, um, you certainly can. So two, two things I'd like to highlight that have come out of the collaborations workshop. First is the concept of research software engineers. Um, there have always been research software engineers. There's always been this role. It's always been hidden. There have been attempts in the past to try and bring it up to um, the surface. But in Collaborations Workshop 2012, there was a discussion session that said, wait a minute, there are lots of different ways of bringing it to the surface. And the main way of doing this is simply by getting people to recognize and group around a common term. Um, people like James Hebrington, who's sitting over there, Simon Hetrick, um, sitting over there, a number of other people in this room, um, all round the this poll and started taking things forward through blog posts, through discussion on open forums, through just continually talking about the idea of research software engineers until everyone could get away from it. Um, they helped set up the Research uh, Software Engineering Association get a common space for people to talk about these issues. 
Um, I know a number of you already registered as part of that and are taking things forward in your own groups. And three years later, so this is three years, this isn't five years, ten years, a lifetime. Three years later, um, EPSRC were persuaded to fund uh, a set of research engineering fellowships and a network to um, understand how research software engineering groups can uh, best take forward the work that they need to do. So, in three years, um, people at this workshop have literally changed the world for those that follow. Same thing comes out of the hackathon. Um, uh, the serial hackathon winner, Robin Wilson over there, um, has, has basically had so many ideas to take forward out of uh, the, the things he has heard and discussed at the collaboration workshop that, you know, how could you not be successful? There are so many ideas, and in particular, uh, last year, this idea of Progressify, uh, where what you, what you basically do is import a library with one line in the Python um, program, and it tracks the provenance of what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's an amazing, it's, it's such a simple idea, but it's the sort of idea that only kind of comes out when you start talking to people and you think, wait a minute, why don't we have this? And then once you, you've thought about why don't we have this, you go, well, why don't we build this? And once you build this, you go, well, why don't we tell the world? And so um, Robin uh, and his fellow um, Hack Day team members have gone out and told the world about this. And it's been pretty impressive. I, I have to say, I was looking at his blog and going like, wow, you know, 8,800 downloads a month was quite impressive, I would say. Uh, getting kind of uh, tweeted all across the Twitter space. That's pretty impressive. Um, uh, 200 stars on GitHub. I wish my repository was about 200 stars. <laughs> uh, so, so the point is, I think, um, that you might think that what we do in the collaborations workshop achieve anything. You might think you're only moving things a little bit further forward, but actually, if all of us move things a little bit further forward, we can make great strides together. Um, and uh, I think one of the other things I've got out of this is you really want people like James and Robin on your discussion teams and in your <laughs> cafe teams, but unfortunately you can't always happen. So uh, after free wins we decided enough is enough, Robin's becoming a judge this year. So, sorry everyone. Okay, so, um, I think that's about all I want to say. I don't want to dig into the, the really interesting things which are talking about yourselves, talking about your ideas. I think the last thing that I would like to uh, sort of put into your minds is why is it him here, standing up here? Why isn't it all of you taking a platform? You, know, you must be thinking, why, why am I the one standing here acting on about how to collaborate? Um, so if you have good ideas about how to take this workshop further forward, particularly once you, for people who are new to this, um, once you've gone through a day or so, and you think, why are they doing it that way? Let us know about it. Um, for the old fans, I've seen a few people who've been to um, uh, all, all what now, I think this is the eighth um, collaborations workshop, they're thinking, you know, like, ah, why haven't they fixed this yet? I told them this the last time I was there, and they still haven't fixed it. Do let us know again. Sometimes we forget things. Um, so, I think one of the best things about the Collaborations Workshop, um, as I've been involved in it, is seeing it evolve. Um, and so, the last thing I'd like to kind of put in your heads is if you think there's a better way of doing this, yeah, let us know. Or, even better, come get involved in the organization for next year. So, without further ado, I will hand back over to 